Okay, so we're back working on this 2007 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD 66 Duramax LMM. And uh, as you recall from the previous videos, I have a, a weird pattern on this relative compression test. This cylinder under compression draws more amperage than the other seven. So I put a pressure transducer in number five glow plug hole. So this pressure pulse on the green trace here represents a pressure increase from compression event in number uh, five cylinder and then the firing order is one two seven eight four five six three so five six three so cylinder number three is showing higher compression when you actually or higher current flow which doesn't make sense unless its companion cylinder which according to the firing order would be number eight unless the exhaust valve doesn't open in number eight cylinder and that would result on two cylinders coming up on compression basically simultaneously. So what I've done is I've actually removed all of the glow plugs now because I'm going to check all of the cylinders but I started with number eight cylinder and notice the time base is over one second here and these are eight compression events. Now because there's no glow plugs in this thing we only get one pressure pulse and we get one rise in current flow but watch what it looks like when I look at this waveform now. There it is there. Okay, so this is my pressure pulse from number eight cylinder. And notice what we've got. We've got a compression event and we've got an unwanted exhaust event. It's got two compression events basically because the exhaust valve is not opening. So I'm going to check the rest of the cylinders and compare, but... I know the problem is a number eight cylinder, probably broken rocker arm, bent push rod, uh, something wrong with that number eight exhaust valve not opening, and that would account for the higher. You'd actually basically have, in this scenario here, where's my waveform, you've actually got, in this location, you've got cylinder number three coming up on compression, and cylinder number eight attempting to exhaust, and it can't. So you basically got almost two compression events occurring simultaneously that would account for the spike and starter current draw and it would also account for the popping noise in the intake when it's running uh, I know you probably say why not just pull the valve covers off well it's not that easy to just pull the valve covers off it's not five minutes so wanted to have an idea if I need to do both sides or just one side so we're gonna do a, a compression test on all cylinders at least compare them all and see what they look like So here goes the same test on cylinder number two live, turning on the switch. And we'll pause this and see if we can bring it back. There it is there. So you can see that in the same time frame of one second, we get about basically one compression event. If I could get it zeroed in here, let me do this. One compression event on number two. As I suspected, that cylinder is working fine. So I'm going to do the rest of them and compare and get this. There we go. There's two compression events in basically nine seconds, roughly, as opposed to twice as many compression, four compression events in nine seconds. Anyways, we'll do the rest of the cylinders. If there's anything different, I will video that. Well, here's number four cylinder on the on the uh, driver's side and it also has a, a pressure pulse when the exhaust should be opening so I'm wondering if that has a rocker arm issue too but it hasn't evolved to where the number eight is so we're gonna have to have a close look at that cylinder too I don't recall seeing that on number two so we're gonna have a look at these uh, saved recordings from this LMM uh, looking at the different uh, relative compression events. So here's cylinder number one. So I initially started out with the pressure transducer set at 250 PSI and later I changed it to 500. 
And I also had to put a battery charger on it when I went down the, well, after I did three cylinders because the battery was getting a little weak. So that's why the AC ripple in the in this voltage here. But here is the uh, compression events uh, with the pressure transducer in cylinder number one. And you can see the time base, the delta time between is roughly 0.7 seconds. And there's two compression events. Now you can't really see a ripple of current. There's very slight ripple there but it's because all of the glow plugs are out except for the pressure transducer in that cylinder. So that's one. Let's see, where's three? Here's cylinder three. Same thing, delta time between compression events, roughly 0.7 seconds. There's cylinder five, same thing. And it's hitting about 280 PSI compression. Now the engine is cold at room temperature and the batteries are getting kind of weak so that could result count for the lower lower than normal compression uh, and seven so that's the right hand bank passenger side and they're all consistent roughly about 0 0.7 0 0.8 seconds between uh, let's see that's roughly 0 0.8 sec 0.8 sec 0.7 seconds delta time and you can see two compression events now. Now we'll go down the right bank, cylinder number two. Same thing. Cylinder number four. Now I noticed a problem with cylinder number four. If you look here, there is a second bump, a second pressure rise in that cylinder, which would be half halfway between two compression events is the exhaust event. So it looks to be like there's something going on with number four's exhaust valve as well. We'll have to pay close attention to the rocker arms and push rods in that cylinder as well. And maybe the cam lobe and lifter. And number six, two, four, six. That one looks normal. And last but not least, the cylinder with the problem. And you can see there are two compression events. So this is all set at the same time base. So the delta time between cursor one and two is still roughly 0.8 seconds. And you notice in between the two compression events, we have a second semi compression events, which is an exhaust event. So the exhaust valve is not opening in that cylinder or appears not to be opening in that cylinder for some reason, broken rocker arm, bent push rod, flat cam lobe, collapsed lifter, broken lifter, we'll find out. We're going to pull the valve cover off. That's next.